A little while back, we got an update letter from the producers of Pokemon Unite. I thought it was just to me, but apparently this letter was to everyone. Fine. And this letter talked a lot about what was going on inside the game. It talked about legendary Pokemon. It talked about Zacian. It talked about some of the stuff coming up for the future of Unite. And it talked about celebrating the anniversary of having two years of Pokemon Unite. And in this video, I will be giving my letter back to the producers. Look, I, I think it's only fair. If you send me a letter, I'm going to send you a letter back. And since my handwriting is terrible, I think it's reasonable that I do this in video form. So here is my letter to the producers of Pokemon Unite. I'd like to start off with something rather controversial, and that is that I think Mewtwo, Y, and X are actually probably a net positive for Pokemon Unite, even though there are serious issues with it. And I know a lot of the community would disagree with me, and trust me, playing through solo queue, I would disagree with myself, but I do think the ideas behind Mewtwo and what they have done for the game clearly were a success. However, it's a real double-edged sword, as apparently all swords are. Before we get into a direct response to the letter and we talk more about Mewtwo, let me say this about Pokemon Unite. I think Pokemon Unite actually doesn't get enough credit for being as good as it is. If you spend a lot of time with mobile games, you'll know how easy it is for a mobile game to be mired down and needing energy to even play a match, and you can only play three games a day, or you have to buy more Elixir, and you can't actually even compete at a reasonable level because you don't have the right troops or anything like that. Pokemon Unite has not run into these issues for the most part. Some recent releases being a minor exception to this rule, even though they were given to people for free. Pokemon Unite has also done an amazing job of making each Pokemon feel like that Pokemon from the games and make them fun to play at the same time, which I think is amazing. You really do feel like that is how Snorlax would play and it feels great. And you really do feel like you are Greninja inside these games. So much so that some of my allies think they're literal ninjas, which is a whole other thing. But in general, they have made an extremely fun game with some difficult issues. However, good or bad metas aside, I don't think we've had the kind of balance issues that we have seen inside the game until really the start of this year with the Zacian release. Not only did we have Zacian that released very, very, very powerful, way too powerful, way too easy to get KOs with this Pokemon. It was very simple to dominate games with this. It also is paired with a supporter, Comfey, that was extremely powerful after a huge buff given to that Pokemon. And you sort of had this really horrible combination that for the most part, outside of some brief windows of good balance, has continued from Zacian now all the way to Mewtwo with Pokemon being way too strong. We've had some really powerful releases as well with Inteleon, Umbreon, Lapras, things like that, but none of them really reached the height of Mewtwo and Zacian. And I think I've figured out what the issue is. The issue is the concept of legendary Pokemon. For the longest time, I really didn't think this was a problem, but now I'm starting to realize that the idea behind legendary Pokemon is a problem for a MOBA and for Pokemon Unite. Now, according to the letter from the producers that we received, it actually doesn't need to be a problem. This is something that can be fixed. And if you are a producer or someone who works on Pokemon Unite, I urge you, hear my call. I have an idea for how you can make this work. Legendary Pokemon in the mainline games make sense. I remember the first time I encountered the birds and Mewtwo and stuff like that when I played Pokemon Blue. It was exciting and you were very excited to catch them and use them to battle against your friends and it was a whole thing. They make sense in the context of those games. They don't make as much sense in the context of a MOBA. In a perfect world, every Pokemon would be evenly balanced with each other. Very Thanos-like. But in the world of Pokemon, Pokemon are not balanced in that way. So it makes it a little difficult when you're trying to bring in the concepts from the mainline games or from the lore of Pokemon and put them into Pokemon Unite. Now, Jake, you brilliant mustachio genius, I hear you saying, it would be odd for a Pokemon like Mewtwo to not be more powerful than a Pikachu. And in general, I do kind of agree with you. There is a lore behind it. There are 
games and movies and all of these things behind legendary Pokemon. So it is a little tough to see them inside of a game and watch them get beat by Azumarill. It doesn't really add up. However, for a MOBA, we kind of need it to. I want to take a look at the letter here really quick, and I want to read you a couple sections because I think it really does illustrate the issue with the design philosophy around legendary Pokemon. Let me quickly say, I understand I'm not a game designer. I know that there is a lot that goes into making a video game that I don't even understand this much of, and there's probably like a whole bunch that I would need to understand. And everyone that I have met at Unite, everyone that I have talked to that is a part of the game or the tournament scene, genuinely cares about doing something good. And I feel like it's a great group of people, which is why I'm hoping that this video can get across some of the thoughts that I have and some of the thoughts that I think the community has as well. In the letter, it states, First, we'd like to acknowledge that Zacian was excessively strong at release in the following months. Our goal with Zacian was to tune it over time to reach the state it's currently in, which is actually much more reasonable. That's not part of the letter. That's just something I'm saying. However, we recognize that our communication on the subject was limited and that the time spent overpowered was prolonged. Yes, yes. We would like to explain our design philosophy behind legendary Pokemon moving forward and detail steps we will be taking to improve their arrival on Aos Island. All right, so here we go. With the implementation of both Zacian and Mewtwo, we would like to continue gradually increasing the number of legendary Pokemon in Unite. We believe that legendary Pokemon are an integral part of the game that contains Pokemon battles, which are indeed central to Pokemon Unite's format. So obviously Pokemon as a company, they care about legendary Pokemon and they want them represented in this game. Since its release, Pokemon Unite has placed great importance on expressing the personality of each Pokemon through their gameplay mechanics. As such, we are designing legendary Pokemon to become the leaders of their respective teams, conveying their strength through their capabilities while giving them weaknesses in exchange for that strength. And here, I think, is one of the biggest issues that we run into here, is in this sentence, conveying their strength through their capabilities while giving them weaknesses in exchange for that strength. I actually understand what they're going for here with legendary Pokemon. And I think we're running into two things. It's either we can't design legendary Pokemon like this. I say we as if I'm a part of it. It's either that Pokemon Unite can't design legendary Pokemon like this, or they actually have to live up to this thought process a lot better inside the game. They continue, we modeled this concept by making Zacian's Rusted Sword take up one of its three held item slots, and we will be exploring opportunities to refine this concept even further in the future while balancing Pokemon Unite's unique and evolving style of competitive play. They also mention that they're going to have the legendary Pokemon playable on the test server, and hopefully they're going to come to the game uh, fairly balanced. So let's talk about this idea here briefly about their strength and their weaknesses. And let's talk about Mewtwo specifically. I think Mewtwo is actually an amazingly well-designed Pokemon and it nails its intention. Mewtwo's intention, at least in my eyes, and they mention this a little bit in the letter, I'll quote them here. We're aiming for Mewtwo to be easy for beginners to use. We've done this by giving it a simple move set, but some moves will require good timing to bring out their full potential. I, I somewhat disagree. Meaning players will have room to show off their skills. We look forward to seeing how players affect the tide of battle with Mewtwo. Mewtwo can fill its Mega Gauge using basic attacks, blah, blah, blah. It will evolve Mega multiple times. Mewtwo is designed for new and returning players, and maybe some players that just love Mewtwo, to come to Pokemon Unite and actually be able to compete with people who have been playing 10,000 plus games, or people who have been playing since release, or people who are amazingly good at Alolan Ninetales, and they're just stepping into Pokemon Unite for the first time. They want something that they can compete with, and they pick up something like Mewtwo X or Y, or previously Zacian. Actually, as a design philosophy, I have no issue with what they want to do with Mewtwo. They run into a couple problems. First of all, how are you? Are you good? No. First of all, I think we run into a couple problems right here. Uh, we look back at Zacian, and while it did have one held item slot that it couldn't use, I think that is an interesting way to sort of balance this Pokemon. It was clearly way too powerful, and that was obvious very, very soon. So whether or not they thought the one held item would change things, I think it's a cool way to sort of try to balance this Pokemon. It obviously wasn't enough, but 
I see an effort there. And I think I know what the effort is for Mewtwo as well. The thought process behind Mewtwo, and I could be wrong here, this is just me gathering everything I can from this letter and seeing how it originally played in the public test server, seeing it now. I think the idea behind Mewtwo was it's simple. It's formatted around basic attacks. It's fine until it megas and then it's very, very good. And you need to sort of figure out how to get into that mega form. And then once you're there, you can wreak some havoc. And then once you're not, you kind of have to figure out how to get back to that state. Unfortunately, they have not set this sort of mega, non-mega situation up well enough. You're not bad enough when you're not mega and you're not mega enough for a short enough time for this to actually feel like you have this sort of immense strength and also counterable weakness that they talk about in their own letter. I think if this is the intention, we are missing the mark with Mewtwo and we miss the mark with Zacian. Let me talk about some releases in Pokemon Unite that were very powerful that I think absolutely nailed it. Even though maybe they were a little too strong, one of them that I'm gonna bring up was definitely too strong, but let's go through them. Inteleon, Inteleon is extremely strong, but Inteleon actually requires some pretty patient play. You have to figure out how to manage its critical hit counter, while at the same time, you have to be able to avoid enemies and make sure that you're playing at a safe enough distance because you're a squishy Pokemon. I think it is an amazing design. I never even liked Inteleon. I was actually disappointed with it as a starter. I normally always pick water starters in games and I was super disappointed with Inteleon. Now that it's in Unite, I love it. Let's flash backwards now to another release in Unite that I love, didn't love in the main games, Dodrio. Dodrio is a almost perfect release for the game. It's a high skill Pokemon, but if you're highly skilled with it, you can do some really cool things. And other players are just gonna kind of be a little clueless with it. And I think you need to sort of find this balance here, where if you want a Pokemon to do 160,000 damage and get 20 KOs in a game, it can't be as simple as Mewtwo. You have to find that sort of balance. And a Pokemon that did that pretty well is something like Mew. Mew was way overpowered when it was released, but Mew is hard to play. So Mew is right up there with Inteleon and Dodrio. If people were really good with it, it was insane, but not enough people were really good with it. Now you have Mewtwo and you have Zacian. These Pokemon upon release, and we'll see how they change over time. But upon release, these Pokemon are not difficult to play. They are extremely easy to do what you need to do. If the Pokemon are going to be that beginner friendly, which again, I think is a real positive thing, and clearly it's been positive for the game because there are a ton of people hopping on and playing Pokemon Unite for these Pokemon, then I think we have to recognize that their power level can't be that high. If Mewtwo played the way it played, but was ending every game with 90,000 damage and 10 KOs, I think we would all agree that this is a solid release and something really good for beginner and newer players to come into the game and find something that they can actually compete with, which I think is the whole intent behind Mewtwo. Really well-intentioned, and for a lot of those players, they're feeling very good, but for the majority of our player base right here, I think we are feeling pretty bad. This whole situation reminds me of playing Pokemon Blue back in the day with my friends, and we would uh, all play in the library before school because it was very, very popular. And we would all play Pokemon, and we all started getting legendary Pokemon, and it got to the point where we all had a Mewtwo on our team, we all had one of the legendary birds, we all had basically the, the few most powerful Pokemon in the game, and really quickly we realized that it was pretty bland because we were all just playing with the most overpowered thing inside the game. And we started having to, as children, make rules that, okay, we're not playing with Mewtwo, we're not playing with any of the legendary birds, we're only using Pokemon like this. We literally noticed as kids that this was making our gameplay experience worse and we had to change it. The idea behind using legendary Pokemon in that environment didn't work as kids, and I don't think it fully works as adults inside of Pokemon Unite 
unless we actually see the design philosophy stuck to inside the game. Make them strong, but give them counterable weaknesses that you can actually exploit. Give people the ability to fight against these Pokemon, even if the Pokemon are simple to use, which legendaries for the longest time inside of these games have been. I feel like I've harped on this design philosophy idea a bit, but I do think if that's the thought process behind these Pokemon, they need to be nerfed faster, and I think we need to stick to that design philosophy a little better, because I don't think we're nailing it. And I don't think anyone thinks we're nailing that design philosophy. I wanted to add as a last thought on how this situation could be a lot better. I want to have everyone think back and look towards the Pokemon Unite Championship Series and the World Championships. The Pokemon Unite Championship Series, by the way, like from year one to year two has grown exponentially. The amount of people watching live, the amount of people watching the YouTube of it. It's been an immense honor to be able to be a part of that and cast these games. And I think a lot can be learned from the excitement around that and from what the players in that environment get to experience. Inside of those games, there is a pick and ban phase, there is a draft phase there, and draft honestly would save so many problems in Pokemon Unite. If you had a draft phase in Pokemon Unite and you had brand new Pokemon that may or may not be balanced, banned for a week or something like that right off the get-go, you would have such a better experience inside the game overnight. Obviously, there's so much going on with Pokemon Unite, with them ramping up to have a release in China to China possibly competing in the world championships and all the information coming out from that it's very possible that a draft mode will be coming to Pokemon Unite at some point I really think it would help mitigate a lot of these issues right away but it still doesn't change the fact that I think we can do a better job of sticking to the thought process of how these Pokemon are designed I'll say another thing here that I think is a little controversial at times, and it's the future for Pokemon Unite is very, very bright. I think the game is heading in the right direction, but I think a few of these legendaries specifically have been pretty big missteps from a balanced perspective inside the game. And it makes the experience for one or two players very, very good at times, and the experience for the other eight players inside of a match not so rewarding, depending on how things are going inside of a game. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening. I would encourage you to please share this video around. I would love for the people behind Pokemon Unite to see this because I really do think if we could sort of stick to that concept behind legendary Pokemon, then they can work inside Unite. Because right now, I think we have a really unfortunate situation with these releases. And leave your comments below for ways that you think this problem could be fixed. As always, please try to be cool, be civil. Imagine that people from Pokemon could actually be looking at these comments and leave something thoughtful that could help make the game a little bit better. I hope you enjoyed my letter, even though it's long and rambly and a video. I love you all, and I will see you all very, very soon. Mm -hmm. Nerf Mewtwo.